Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, this, this will be a, a tutorial corresponding to the sessional that we're supposed to have it in the first half. So this one is for dynamic allocations. So in this session, I have included the use of new and delete operators and also uh, dynamic allocation of one dimensional or two dimensional arrays, some of the assignments on that. And there will be some assignments related to references also. So uh, these were the assignments. I have already talked about the last one. That is, if you have got say six departments, say number of departments are fixed. Now we have the number of students in each department may differ. Okay. So this example we have already mentioned in the first class uh, in, in my theory. So the department one has got this number of students. Department two has got this number of students. Department three might be this much. Four might be this much. Five is a very small department and six is also this much. So if these are the number of students and if these are the number of departments, so we would like to have the marks obtained by each student of each department stores. Marks means this may be the CGPA. Okay. So in this case, we could have done it using a two dimensional array having six uh, rows and the number of columns. If we would like to fix it, we can fix it to the department who has, which has got the maximum number of students. So this is possible. And then we can store the number of students, the CGP of the students in each department. So in that case, this much will be wasted. Here, this much will be wasted. So these portions will be so these uh, elements will be not be utilized. If you use a uh, uniform, if you allocate uniform number of columns for each and every department, it's of no use. I mean, it, it's a sheer wastage of space. So we can do it more efficiently. The space utilization can be made more efficiently if we allocate variable number of rows, uh, uh, sorry, variable number of columns for each row, asking the number of students and accordingly storing it. Okay, so in that case, what we decided is to have, uh, uh, so this array we allocate and we assign the base address here so that it can point. So we allocate this much. So this will point to this like this. Sorry, so it will this much. So this is for the other department, fourth department, the fifth department like this. So this is just to illustrate that in a two dimensional allocation of integer elements, we can have each row having multiple, uh, I mean, varying number of columns. So the only trick that we can play because we are storing, say in this case also CGPAs are floating point values, but still we can use the first element of each row to store the number of students. So that's a trick that we can use. So instead of 
C we can actually allocate C plus uh, C plus one number of elements for each each of the ith department. Is that fine? So th that we have already mentioned. That was the last discussion in our in our last theory class. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So so this part is done. So the other assignments that we had it was. Uh, allocating dynamically a one dimensional array and trying to use it as a heap. So heap data structure I'll be explaining here. How many of you know heap, heap data structure? I think I asked this also. So uh, do you know the theory of heap data structure? Yes, uh, sir. Mean max heap. Yes, yes. So do all of you know the th basic theory? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how heap is stored? Arrays using an array. Let's, so I'll have to talk less. So I'll consider it later on. So before that, I'll be talking about this one. So dynamic allocation of 2D arrays. And once we allocate that array, I'll be storing a matrix and I'll be doing matrix multiplication and determinant of a matrix. So matrix multiplication, all of you know, I'll be mainly talking about the determinant finding determinant of a matrix. OK. And use once you know the determinant. So do you know the Kramer's rule to solve a set of linear equations? Yes, sir. How many of you know? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. So all of you know because in the basic mathematics it is taught. So in the Kramer's rule, what do you need to find out? To find out a set of uh, so to solve a set of linear equations, what is the basic thing that you have to find out? Del x, del y, del z, and uh, the determinant of x, y, z. Yes, yeah, so it's basically a determinant of that. So once you know how to uh, calculate determinant of a matrix, you can just use that uh, function to solve a set of linear equations using Kramer's rule, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes. if you have got, say, yes. a set of 10 equations or maybe 20 equations involving 20 variables, you can just input the values, the coefficients and also the, you know, the, the value of C or whatever you say. So if you input it, it will be solving it for you and you can verify it also for small values and all for, uh, say, small number of equations. So this is the objective. So once I know this, I've got a matrix multiplication uh, function. I've got a determinant function. So what I can do, I can uh, create my matrix header file. So header file name is my matrix. So there I actually include all the matrix related functions, multiplication, subtraction. Also, I should include the matrix read, right? So reading a matrix, writing, uh, displaying a matrix, then it may be allocating a matrix, 2D matrix allocation, basically 2D array. So all these including the determinant of all. So all the useful matrix related operations, you can uh, display the other, you know, include the other transpose of a matrix and all this. Maybe sometimes you can find out the rank of a matrix. So as many as you can, so you, you can do that. But for the time being, you can include the, uh, what what things you will, it will be here. It will be allocate matrix, like dynamic allocation. Allocate matrix, then display matrix. And then uh, determinant of a matrix like that. And then also there will be a, a read matrix. Read means you have to input the matrix. So dynamic allocation, uh, reading, displaying, determinant. So these things you can include in a header file. So in a header file, the only difference is it's just a library of functions or methods, whatever you say, without having the main function. So the main function is not there. So if you include the header file, if you save it in the same working directory, if you include it in your, uh, in some of your codes, as like hash include within double quote, this value. So you can use, you can call the functions that is there in the header file and you can just use it. So your actual new application will be uh, much compact looking like without having uh, all the 
related functions that we'll be calling. So you can just call the header file. You can just uh, include the header file there. Okay, so we'll be talking about how to find a determinant and we'll be trying to write the code for that. Okay. And once I do this, I think this grammar rule using so, so solution using grammar rule that you can do. So this is a determinant, uh, finding determinant uh, of a matrix this is a formula, right? I think all of you have calculated the determinant of a matrix. So what is this? So if A is a, if A is a matrix, see if we have, took an example, right? You can see, is there or not? Okay, so if you have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a matrix. If I if I would like to calculate the determinant of the matrix, so how do I do this? So this is uh, one. So first of all, this is uh, minus one to the power. So basically, minus one to the power. Uh, so if I consider the index of this, this is i plus j. If I start it from 0, 1, 2, this is 0, 1, 2. So this will be i plus j, this will be 0 plus 0. This times the value of this a, uh, uh, value of this element 0, 0, that is 1, times the determinant, uh, uh, times the, uh, this major, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, the minor element. So minor of this element is actually 5, 6, 8, 9. Okay, so the determinant of this. So determinant of this minor matrix, this is the element and this is the sign. This plus, what will be the next case? I'm trying to find out the determinant of this matrix, 3 cross 3 matrix. So this is minus 1 to the power the index of this element 0 plus 0 plus this element uh, uh, multiplied the element multiplied this minor matrix the determinant of that plus what will be the case minus 1 to the power I'll consider this 2 now so 2 will be 0 1 so 0 plus 1 into the value of this element 2 multiplied the determinant of determinant of this minor minor how you get it the so 2 is the 0 1th element so I eliminate the 0th row and the first column and the remaining one so it is 4 6 7 9 4 6 7 9 plus I consider now 3 so again minus 1 the index of 3 is 0 2 so 0 plus 2 times the value of the element 3 then the minor matrix the determinant of that so this will be obtained again it is a 0 2th element so I will eliminate the 0th row and the third column what remains is 4 5 7 8 4 5 7 8 so then I calculate so this will be what will be the value here What is the value? Minus 1 to the power 0? 1 into 1 into and this is a 2 cross 2 matrix. Determinant is easy to calculate. So 5 cross 9, 5 into 9 minus 8 into 6. So the values will be 45 minus 48. Plus this will be what is the value here? Minus 1 to the power 1 it will be minus 1 into 2 into this cross this into uh, minus this cross this. So 9 for the 36 minus 42 plus minus 1 raised to the power 2 so this will be 1 into 3 into 32 minus 35 okay so what is this value minus 3 plus 12 minus 9 it is 0. So what is the determinant of this matrix? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It is 0. 
so this uh, i think you all know just i just uh, recap that so that we can we can write the code for it so what do i write here so this determinant of a matrix a where aij is the ith element so this is a and aij is the ith row and the jth column element of this matrix so aij into c so c is basically the cofactor cofactor of aij right so what is the cofactor cofactor is this so apart from this so this is the cofactor so cofactor means minus 1 so if it is aij minus 1 to the power i plus j times the determinant of the minor matrix corresponding to aij so how to get the minor matrix so this is uh, minor of this this is eliminating the elements in the ith row and the jth column whatever is remaining you have to copy right so for the um amrut hello is that fine Yes sir. yes, sir. So now the point is so uh, there are two issues. So the thing is, for any of i, any value of i. So in this case, what we have chosen, like we have chosen, we have considered i equals to one, two, up to n minus one. So because in C it starts from zero. The thing is, for any value of i, in our case, so we have considered i equals to zero. So we have considered the zeroth row element, elements of the zeroth row. and for each of them we have computed in this case manually we have computed the uh, cofactor of each element this is a cofactor of each element this is a cofactor of the 0 1th element this is a cofactor of 0 0 element this is a cofactor of 0 0 1th element this is a cofactor of 0 2th element this way we can do we could have done it with respect to the row 1 elements also or the row 2 elements also then also would have worked so that's why it is written for any of them so we'll specifically consider it for uh, we'll consider it for i equals to 0 we'll calculate this so this is this is enough right so the basic uh, idea is if you are given a matrix of 1 cross 1 in a matrix 1 cross 1 how many elements are there 1 cross 1 matrix one element one element mm -hmm. one element one element right so it has got only one element if it is a two cross two matrix it has got four elements four elements four elements now three cross three means uh, nine elements like this now it can be four uh, four cross four like this so the thing is what we find is to calculate the matrix of a uh, 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 determinant of a particular matrix you have to calculate so you pick up one row the default one or i mean the in all our cases we will consider the zeroth row and for the zeroth row elements we will find out the cofactors and we will just add them up sum them up right that so you can say that in our case it will be uh, a0 a0j and c0j so this zero is fixed in our case so we are not considering all the possibilities so this is just hard coded right and but when you calculate the cij you get so to calculate the determinant of a matrix you basically have to calculate so if it is a 4 cross 4 matrix given if you eliminate so when you are considering this particular element you, you eliminate this two and you find out the uh, minor of this particular matrix and you have to find out the determinant of this matrix right so this is now it's a 3 cross 3 matrix so if you are given with a 3 cross 3 matrix then again you have to uh, consider this row with respect to these row elements you have to find out the matrix so you, you if you basically fix this one you have to eliminate this and this and you have to find out the determinant of this portion right now because it is 2 cross 2 it will be more look, looking like this one so probably you can stop here because now this becomes very simple so multiply this with this minus you multiply this with this and you find out a determinant okay so the thing is the idea is uh, if you are given with a matrix of size it's a it should be a square matrix n cross n so a n cross n matrix if we would like to find out a determinant we have to actually calculate the 
determinant of matrices of size one less than n right because if you eliminate this and this you get one less the size so to calculate the determinant of a matrix uh, in cross n you probably have to call the same determinant function with uh, some a dashed with n minus 1 cross n minus 1 and to solve it you have to again call probably determinant function with some a double dashed means, means after this copying that uh, eliminating the rows and columns after copying that with n n minus 2 cross n minus 2 and then so this goes on like this so to solve a bigger problem you basically so the, the bigger problem is expressed in terms of the lower version of the problem okay and that in turn calls it calls a function with some uh, smaller size of the problem like that it goes on like this so if you reach a 2 cross 2 matrix when this uh, the size of the matrix is 2 cross 2 you do not actually further call the function rather you basically calculate you multiply and then you ca calculate and you start returning so you return the value and then using that uh, you compute and you, you can return the value like this so that's why i mean because of the nature of this uh, problem we can write a recursive function to solve this is that fine yes sir so this part is known to you so just we are, we are trying to map it to a program which we can solve okay okay so what is the basic challenge here what are the basic two steps so the thing is this encoding is probably simple so uh, using a for loop you can do this so this part is probably simple so what is the basic challenge here is to extract so if you are given with a matrix like this sorry matrix like this you have to extract a smaller matrix from it so if this is say this is say x you have to find out y out of it say maybe this element you are considering right now so this should be the zeroth element so this element means you have to eliminate these elements and these elements from this x so you have to basically copy this this so all these tick mark elements need to be copied here okay so if the size of this is say 5 cross 5 this y should be of size 4 cross 4 one less so copying uh, suitable elements from this x to y is one uh, maybe a non trivial task the rest of it is all simple okay so let's see how this can be achieved uh, i mean how do we how can we write a code to achieve this okay let me the problem well, can you see the screen yes sir yes sir okay yes sir so what i did here you see uh, so i have written a portion of the code the rest of the code i will be writing here so what it says you can see that uh, so first of all this matrix need to be read the matrix whose determinant we would like to find out <clears throat> so here i asked for the number of rows and columns although determinant is for a square matrix so r and c the values should be the should be equal so here i write enter the size of the matrix the number of rows and columns i accept read the values right and then uh, so it's basically a dynamic allocation of a 2d array so for that i have declared a pointer mat1 of type int asterisk asterisk so this we have uh, explained a lot in our last few classes theory classes 
so this i have done and i am calling uh, i am defining this function alloc matrix it's basically for dynamic allocation right so if i so if i want to get the allocation actual allocation done through the alloc, alloc matrix so what do you think should be the inputs required to the alloc matrix function and what should be the output that it should return So this alloc matrix. So can you repeat? Yes. So can you repeat the previous sentence? I couldn't hear. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, this alloc matrix is just a function, which will take care of dynamic allocation of the space where the elements of the matrix need to be stored. Okay. So what is the size of the matrix? It is R cross C. In fact, this is in this case it would be R equals to C. I mean R and C both will be the same. So if I enter three and three. it should be allocating dynamically the space for 3 cross 3 integer elements if it is 4 comma 4 it should be 4 cross 4 integer elements so the dynamic allocation will be taken care of by this function so what do you think what should be the input to the function alloc matrix what it should take as input and what should be the output of it rows and columns as input because uh, this i want so if i if i pass on the number of rows and columns it will do it accordingly and what it should return so whatever it has been allocated within the function where from it it gets allocated from the heap now the thing is the base address of that entire uh, so uh, we know that it will be taken care of in two steps right so the thing is you should be having a uh, one dimensional integer array of integer pointers which will be pointing to the row, row elements and all this like that so the base element of that that one will be actually returned right because once you know the pointer to the integer pointer array can you recall that yes sir so then you know that you can so it's basically so uh, then then you know that you can get hold of the entire allocation so you can actually use it for other activities also so this alloc matrix will be returning what will be return type it should be returning the pointer to or the base address of the integer pointer array right that a that that we are labeling as a or b that a portion can you recall so what will be the return type of it what will be the return type hello pointer to integer pointer pointer to integer pointer pointer to pointer to integer right so this is what it means so this is alloc matrix as you can see here it accepts the number of rows number of columns that you have read that you have read in the main and it uh, it does something that we all know many a times we have discussed and it returns the pointer to pointer 20 the base address of that uh, this one so what we do here is we basically declare a pointer right so this pointer will be in the stack segment and this pointer to uh, this pointer will be first pointing to the 1d integer array right? uh, sorry 1d array of integer pointers right that a and then it will be uh, for r number of rows it will be allocating the columns corresponding that uh, that rows each row and it will bind it to m and finally this value what is contained in m will be returned so we return m that's all is that okay so this is simple right yes sir if we return it if we return it and assign it to mat1 this should be compatible because alloc matrix is returning pointer to pointer to integer and this mat1 is also pointer to pointer so these are compatible so if i store it here so using mat1 within the main i can get access to the space allocated for the 2d array right So what is the next next task? Next task is to input the matrix to to read the elements of the matrix. So what do you think? What should be the what should be the uh, parameters to be passed in the input matrix? Within the main, what you know you know the base address to that integer pointer array through which you can reach to the actual rows uh, row elements and all this. so you know the address the starting address of that that one you know the number of rows and number of columns 
so what do you need to pass to a read matrix method or read matrix function which elements do you need to pass getting my question no sir my my question is i am trying to write the base address of the matrix row and column uh, is that clear i mean those who have not who was asking the question i cannot see the names my question was if i so what i did in the last uh, in the last call here what was what i did allocate matrix right so allocate matrix will allocate the space that's all so what is the next step once i have allocated the space for the matrix i i need to read the elements of the matrix right so that i am trying to do using this input matrix function is that okay is that okay yes sir yes sir space allocation for the matrix and here it is reading the elements of the matrix so what i need to pass the base address if i pass the base address to this input uh, to this input matrix function because i need to pass it because this mat mat1 is a local variable right local variable to the to the function it, to the main function so this will not be valid so whatever it contains i cannot see it uh, from within inside this input matrix function so i have to pass this so when i write this mat1 and i write here r and c so i am passing the number of rows number of columns and also the pointer to the uh, that uh, integer pointer array in that 2d allocation so is that enough do i need to pass anything else are you getting me or do i need to draw it in, in, once again in the slides hello yes sir others uh, those who are not responding at all is that okay or yes sir yes sir yes, yes, sir. yes. Uh, yeah this is pretty trivial i mean i think you have done this also uh, this earlier also so now once i pass it so the point is if i pass the base address of the entire data structure so within the function if i know the simply the base address from that i can you know uh, traverse through the whole structure i can find out which element to be accessed and which element we modified because i have given you the key you can actually not only read the values but also you can modify you i mean when you are uh, i mean i mean uh, you, you can not only just access but you can also modify the contents while i am trying to read means i basically want to modify the contents i have to put something there so that's why this base address is good enough so what i do in the input matrix you see in this input matrix and do i need to return anything here does this function need to return some values no sir no sir because if i have given you the key the base address through that if you modify so you are you are free to modify it so if you modify it it will remain there see the point so the thing is the entire allocation is done in the heap so mat1 is a pointer which is in the stack segment only valid within the main function through that you can use it you can access it but when you are calling some other function so this mat1 which is local to main will not work so that's why mat1 the contents of mat1 will be copied here so let, let it be called as say m okay so mat1's content so you you declare int asterisk asterisk m which is same as that of mat1 the type so the value that is contained in mat1 is copied in m and once we have done that I do here so for i equals to 0 to r j equals to 0 to c you basically display the prompt that enter the 0 0 element 0 1 element and you read the values so once this part is done what do you expect the contents of the matrix are, the elements of the matrix are read right hello hello yes sir yes yes sir yes sir so 
once this is done i i would like to see that whether i have read it correctly or not so i i display the uh, say um, i can write here displaying matrix displaying the matrix and then so whenever i i would like to display the matrix display matrix function is called so that whenever i need to read uh, allocate a matrix any 2d matrix i can call this function for matrix multiplication i have to call it twice to read the both the matrices for input matrix i have to call it twice after i have got the allocation and then i can display to make sure that i have read the elements correctly they are properly read right so the display matrix also i can pass the mat1 r and c so that means i am again passing the base address and through that i can just now there is no point of no need to modify so i can do it like this so in the display matrix this is what is done right so is that okay is that fine yes sir so see there is a chance although it works fine but the point is as you have passed the address of uh, you know the base address of the entire allocation that we have made base address of the one integer pointer so here if you by mistake if you make something like uh, if you make something like this then what is going to happen you are going to display but maybe unintentionally if you uh, somehow modify some elements that will be modified because you are anyway working with the pointers so how to stop this happen that any such things will be stopped how to make it how to ensure it that you can simply access or read but you cannot modify by any means in the display function what changes i need to make here or what i need to make to make sure that it, it never gets uh, modified constant, uh, constant. Right? so wh where should i put the const keyword sir um, during the allocation of the uh, <coughs> array like yeah so where should i so the const keyword should be sir, before the here. mat sir be, before the mat after the star here are you sure that this will work sir before end so which one so there are two options so if i put it put the const keyword before here so what does it mean uh, so if i do it like this then what happens then the mat is no longer a pointer variable mat will be a pointer constant but that we don't want so mat so sometimes if i call display matrix mat should point to say maybe matrix 1 if i call to display matrix 2 it should be pointing to matrix 2 like that so do i need to make this constant so this should be matrix is basically a pointer variable but the elements that it points to should be treated as should be treated as constant right are you getting my point yes. hello another another change we can make here what is that so here you see this r r and c this r and c are uh, so what type of whatever parameter passing we are uh, doing here whatever parameter passing pass by value it's pass by call by value right for both r and c so if i would like to go for uh, call by reference here what should i do here if i would like to do call by reference will it work do like this will it work see the point so this is r and c these are integer values here we got the read the values here so this r and c in the display function this r and c we are passing instead of value now what we are passing now these two are call by reference call by reference so what's the problem so what is advantage in doing so so here will you have any additional allocation in the stack for this r and c here no sir no sir see this r and c is part of main but this r and c is a part of display matrix so if you make it a normal call by value so this r and c will be allocated space and they will be taking the copying the value of r and c but if you just write reference and reference of this so there will be no additional allocation right so this is better so i i just make these changes right is that okay 
and within this i just uh, write here mat mat of ij and all this i i can just label it as m also is that fine yes sir yeah so now let us see that if it works or not so i've got g plus plus okay what's the problem here so mat1 was initially uh, not a constant uh, pointer type uh, so we need to change that mat1 okay for the timing let us let, I, i'll talk about the uh, changes later on let me just come to the logic first we'll have the changes options later on okay so now enter the size of the matrix so it will ask for it should be a square matrix so let it be 3 comma 3 so it asks for the enter the 00th element i have given the prompt accordingly so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9. 10. 10. and after that we want to make sure that we have read it properly so first it has allocated the space then it has read so these elements are read in the read matrix and then it is display matrix so displaying the matrix okay in that uh, two dimensional format so that is what it does it's supposed to do is that fine so even if you don't write here uh, if you if you don't pass references still it will work right so if you would like to yes, store sir. like this yes hello any question no sir so this part is fine now we are going to write the uh, actual determinant portion so if i so this matrix determinant so if i make sure that uh, i have to make sure that r is equal to c if it's a square matrix then it will go for uh, this matrix uh, matrix determinant finding out the determinant of a matrix so how many elements do i need to pass in this uh, in that function matrix determinant i mean determinant of a matrix how many arguments do you think need to be passed hello sir two are enough two are enough because it, it must be a square matrix so two are enough let it be say integer say variable n and this mat again let it be m and because we have to access the elements so it should be industry access and what it should return determinant of a matrix is a integer value right integer value it's integer that's all now so what is the first task now so this should be a recursive call because if the if the matrix if the value of n is say 5 or 6 or 7 what it will try to do we will implement the formula but uh, if it is say 6 within the formula it will try to calculate the matrix of uh, the, the determinant of another matrix which will be of size 6 cross 6 and that too will be calling a determinant function to calculate the size a matrix of size 5 cross 5 like that but if the value of n is equal to 1 then do we need to call it once again so recursion stops at some point of time right that's a that's a base condition so what is the base condition here we well, you know we don't need to call once again if n equals 1 so equals 1 n equals 1 or 2 so if n equals 1 it is trivial so it's return what do you need to return if n equals 1 the value itself uh, so what what is how, how to where to get the value so what is the function so that is is 0 0 0 Zero, right? Else, what it what we do? Else, if n equals to two, also then to uh, then also it 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 becomes trivial, right? What is that? So m. Now we can calculate. So zero zero m zero zero into m m one m one one, right? One one. 
minus m cross multiplication m zero one right m zero one multiplied m what will be the value one zero right so this will be Return this. There is no problem here also. But else, what is the problem? Okay, one I have missed. Here. Extra square bracket. M so there is one more square bracket after third M. There is. M zero one. Oh yeah. One there extra parenthesis. Yeah. Now it's it's okay. I think else. They're fine. So now when you when you implement codes. So don't write the full code at once. So once you do, once you have done that, now now you first see that whether the trivial cases are working or not. So you should write it incrementally. So size one. So just the value three. Okay. Oh, I mean it should be. So size one cross one. Element is three. Displaying three, right? So here I can I can uncomment this part. So this is r equals to c. Then we call c out, finding determinant, and we display the values. So what value it should display in the first case? Determinant is also three, right? It is trivial. So in the second case, like when it is two cross two, what is the value? One, two, three, four. What should be the value? Four into one. Four minus six, four minus six minus two. Okay. Yeah. So this is trivial, right? So now let us come to the actual case. What do we do here? What is the first task? Recursive call. Hmm, recursive call. But what is the first task now? Before I go for the recursive call. For loops now. We will be traversing the row and we will call. Uh, we will make a recursive call. Yes, but the important task is to extract the elements from that uh, big matrix, right? So we have to create so the minors. Yeah, yeah, they create the minors. So in from the n cross n matrix, we have to extract the n minus one cross n minus one matrix. That's the case. So here, so result means say this be the the actual result of the determinant, right? Which will be Updating after taking the zero zero element, one one element, one two element like that. So it's a basically the summation, the summation formula. The, so, so the sum, the result, right? And say let, let this be the the value of i. So i is always fixed. So i is the row is always fixed because uh, this the the formula says for any i, uh, any row. So I have fixed it to zero. Okay, so what next? What the purpose of uh, result and I? So what next? L let us write the for loop. So for what I would like to write? So for wh what should I write here? J. So J is equal to zero to yeah, so, row. So what I what I mean is, so in the zeroth row, you have to basically uh, consider the different column elements. So considering i to zero, you have to consider J equals to zero. So zero 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 one zero two. So this for loop. So how many for loops is required? Just one for loop is required, right? If you recall this, you see this is. I have set i to zero, so this basically a zero j and c zero j for j equals to one to n or zero to n minus one. What the point? So how many for loops here? One for loop is good enough. So for j equals to zero, j less than j less than n, j plus plus. What I do here inside? I have to find out the 
I have to formulate. Uh, I have to first extract the cofactor uh, or the minor matrix, whatever you say. So for that, what I do? Cofactor. Or we can say the minor matrix, whatever. Say we write here M, comma, J, comma, N. This, so I write it. I define a new function. Function to extract, extract the uh, minor of which element. Of M, of which element M, zero, J, right? Is that okay? Is that fine? So now, so what things I need to pass? So I have to extract the elements from that matrix M. I mean matrix pointed by M. So that's why I pass the contents, uh, which is contained in the pointer M. J is the corresponding, so this value will change. So uh, this J and this N is important because I have to then formulate. Uh, I have to basically allocate space for N minus one cross N minus one. So this, so these three are uh, enough. Is that fine to extract the minor matrix? Hello. Yes, sir. So if this extracts, it should be returning it to something. So let us call it as cof uh, mat. So cof mat is the cofactor matrix, or you can say minor or whatever. So again, this is a matrix. So so given this matrix M, which you have, uh, which you are given, whose determinant you would like to find, uh, you may have to. So apart from the trivial cases where the n is equals to one and two, you have to find out the uh, the smaller version of the matrix, which is a minor matrix corresponding to element zero j. So once you extract it, it will be returning the value. So basically, it is. Uh, similar to it will be similar to that of uh, allocate matrix. It's not allocate, but it's basically uh, you have to in the so within the cofactor you will be allocating the space as well as you will be copying the elements there. Both will be done here, and the base address will be uh, will be pointed by cof cof mat, right? So let us assume that if it is done successfully, then what do, what will be the next step? Result plus equal to <coughs> because it's basically a summation. Result plus is plus equal to what is the what is the formula here? Matrix determinant of cofactor. This one. So you have so C is basically this one. What I write here? So pow power minus one to the power minus one to the power. What will be the value here? So J. I. So I plus J, right? I plus J. I plus J, or you can write zero plus J because I is anyway it will be always zero, right? I plus J, then times. What is this? This this times the element itself. What is the element? M. Quickly, tell me. Zero J. Zero J. What I want now? Times the determinant of that cofactor matrix, right? So what do I call? I now recursively call matrix determinant, mat debt. So this same function I call. So what do I pass here? I pass here m. I pass here. What value n I pass minus here? One. N minus, n minus one. one, right? Because now this cofactor matrix is one less the dimension of that. Or you know, we need to pass uh, cofactor, I guess. Uh, Co mat. Cof mat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Co mat. Cof mat. Cof mat. Is that okay? Is that yes. fine? Yes. So now, once there is some mistake, I think. What has happened? Oh, there is one more parenthesis required. Now this is done. So now, once you have done that, so you expect that C out. Uh, so what I want to have is to have after every iteration, I would like to see that whether the values are correct or not. Instead of checking, so this is the kind of debugging that you should write so that uh, in case you have got errors, you don't get confused with it. So it's zero. Then this, what is this? This is 
j right so result after this after this step then this then result so after every iteration i'll check the results okay so after doing this so after this for loop i would be expecting that for every element in that 0th row it will be calculating the determinant of the corresponding uh, cofactor matrix and it will be uh, updating it accordingly by recursively calling it and finally so once this is done uh, so that means the result is ready so it should be returning return result is that okay is that fine yes sir so now we would like to have this cofactor matrix this cofactor extraction to be implemented we cannot check this because it will not work we calling cofactor so cofactor what it would return cofactor returns the base address of that uh, smaller version of the matrix right what it should return right and what is this int asterisk asterisk so let it be let us call it as something else say uh, say c or or say like let us call it as c and this this j let it be called as int maybe uh, some index let us call it as index right because that is a corresponding column index for which we are trying to find it out because the row index is always zero and this is the value of int so this is the size you can say it's s the size and still you can call it m there is no problem in it okay hello yes sir so what is the first step now here you have to first allocate space for a matrix right you have to you are going to create a matrix of size s minus 1 cross s minus 1 is that uh, so sorry s cross s or what hello sir s minus 1 s minus 1 S minus one cross S minus one. So what do I need to do here? So what is the first step now? The first step is to allocate a matrix, allocate the space for a matrix. So I can simply call this. So I can simply call this line. I will be copying it. This space allocation for the minor matrix. and here i can call it as uh, some other say c and this alloc matrix what is this r and c, uh, r and c what values i'll pass here s minus 1 s minus 1 So, sir when we have passed itself i think we have sent n minus 1 i think we have passed mm. what what i did here so it was i am trying to get the determinant of a uh, cofactor matrix this cofactor matrix okay this co no the, here it here i have sent see here i have sent n the value of n here you see hello okay sir okay this is n so i have to just reduce the size here itself is that okay yes sir yes so now i have to just eliminate the elements in the 0th row and the jth column right that is what is required that's all so here what we can do 
for the resultant matrix so definitely the same indices will not work so the index of the original matrix m should be maybe it is i and j and the index corresponding to this cofactor mat minor matrix say let it be c i c j are you getting the difference yes Hello? sir so let yes. it be i n t c i and c j c i equals to c j equals to zero so let this be the indices uh, for the minor matrix yes let this i n t i and j I don't think I have used uh, I and J here elsewhere. So I and J, these are indices to be used for for the original matrix that I have actually passed this M, right? Original matrix M for this minor matrix C. Okay, is that fine? So now what I have to do? I have to just write a for loop. For loop I goes to zero. I less than, I less than. It should be what? S or S minus one? Sir, S. S. So, do I really need to take care of the? So, do I really scan through the zero row? Do I need to do that? No. So, can I just write it from one itself? Can I write it from one? Yes, sir. Because you know, zero H row will be any case. All the elements of the zero H row will be eliminated. So this this is basically the copying code, right? Copying double elements from C uh, from M to C, right? Let's see the comment. Excluding zero H row and and which one zero H row and the uh, G H column. J no, column. not J. What is that? Index. Index column. I mean the that that which which column should be eliminated. Index. So this is the index that I have given. <coughs> so in uh, line number forty-one, is that a valid way to declare integers, sir? Which one? Line number forty-one. Oh no. Is that fine? What is the first first statement inside the loop? So what what should be the CJ? CJ should be zero, right? It is always it should be always zero here because when you start scanning the original row, or original matrix, any of the row of the original matrix, the resultant matrix also the the column index should be zero. Is that fine? So you are starting. Yes, so then we write for. So we can copy this. A J should be starting from zero because columns you don't know. Sometimes it is zero, sometimes it is one, two, three like this. So for J it should be. So within this, what should I do? What should I do? I'll copy. I'll copy the elements of M to C, right? Which elements I should copy? M. Tell me, which element should I copy? 
the ith element i'll copy to cicj provided when should i copy uh, when should i copy if when should i copy i'll not copy it in all the cases if so j not when j is equal to not equal to index index means right? that's what it means Sir. and after that what i do after that what i do but but for every copy Sir. for a cj should be incremented right because ci is remaining the same so ci is the same and then cj it's changed is that fine yes sir and after that before i go and copying the next row of the original matrix what should i do the ci should be ci should be ci plus plus ci should be incremented so once this is done what do you want i just want to see that whether uh, i have done it correctly or not it has really copied it so what do i do i cop i call display matrix to display the the resultant one right before i return it so these these, these are the important debugging steps that later on you can comment it once you know that it's working properly so what should i pass here what should i pass what should i pass in the display what are the values uh, what are the variables here which one i would like to display c right so c i would like to display what is the size of the c s minus 1 minus 1 That fine. You have to follow the same uh, set of arguments, right? And then what next? If it is assuming it to be fine, then I return. What I, what do I return here? What do I return? Return C. Return C. That's all. Hopefully this is correct. Let's see. What happened? S minus one display matrix. Co-factor. S minus one. S minus one. What is the problem? Oh, there is no X here. No, there is no S. J in matrix. Data. Sir, J was not declared. The for loop. I have declared J here. Matrix determinant for loop, sir. In matrix mm -hmm. determinant uh, functions, sir. Okay, uh, matrix determinant function. J is not declared. Okay. J is declared now. What else? What what it says? Mat display matrix C. S minus one. S minus one. Cannot by non-constant L value uh, initializing the display matrix. Okay. Hmm. Acha, acha. You are you have to pass the. So you pass by reference. So S minus hmm. one won't be accepted. Let, it, let us make it simple right now. We'll make the changes later on. Make it simple. I'm trying to pass some integer integer value instead of. The reference of hmm. okay so let us uh, write three cross three matrix one two three four five six seven see the values so the displaying the matrix is a bit, so finding determinant so when it was zero zero element the result was minus three was it minus three can you recall it it was minus three right Is forty five minus forty eight yes, minus three. Then this minus three plus equal to. Then the second case it was this cross this. So it was basically plus twelve. So minus three plus twelve is plus nine. And then after that it was it is it was actually uh, the value was uh, it was uh, it was minus nine. Minus. For this it was minus nine. 
So plus nine minus eight is zero. Got the point? So it's working. Yes, sir. So if it is say, if it is say, um, nine, eight, seven. Okay. Three, nine, eight, seven, and then we have got um, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then also it is zero. I, I mean, you can you can cross check it because it is important to cross check using this using this code. So, this matrix calculator. There is a. Can you see the screen? So you can put the values, you can find out the date, and you can verify before you submit. Okay, so so this testing is extremely important. For larger values also, you can test. So is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is uh, this is the illustration of using of recursive function calls, but more importantly, here we are passing. Uh, 2D arrays, not the array as a whole, but the base address of the arrays to a suitable local uh, locally declared pointer. And depending on the situation, we are passing both the uh, rows num row row and column numbers in case of display and input. But in case of determinant, we know that it's a square matrix. So we are just passing one argument that is good enough. And so, what things uh, what things are missing here? What might create a problem here? It works completely okay, but it uh, you know drops a lot of garbage in the it, it, uh, the residual garbage is too much. If it is a huge matrix, you uh, you don't know what is going to happen because every time this this minor matrix is created, you are not utilizing it. Are you doing that? Hello. No sir. So it it creates a huge garbage. As you can see, the exponentially the garbage is increasing. So what I can do. And what you people should do is to write another function called deallocate matrix, dealloc matrix. And where should I call the deallocate matrix? In this case, where should I call? Here I should call to deallocate this one. In whichever function I have called the allocate matrix, definitely not in the not in the cofactor because this this I am returning this allocation, right? But what what I can do here is here in this case. Once I have computed. Once I have computed, I can I can remove the cofactors. Like every time I do it here, where should I call the deallocate matrix? In this case, here. After the zero after the zero zero one, I do not require that, right? After calculating this, I don't require it. So I can call deallocate and remove this matrix M. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So I can pass the address and it, and the and the function will do it according. But I should not do it here because here you have allocated, you have copied the values and you are using it. After you have used it, there is no longer uh, it's no longer of any use. So you have to call the deallocate. So to write the deallocate matrix here, some function here, and what I should pass here, the value of m and also the size, right? Value of n and size of it. What will be the size of it? What will be the size of it? Or I mean, what, what we actually should pass? Not m. What should we actually pass? Co cofactor uh, uh, cofactor matrix, comma. What? What value should I pass here? N minus one, right? Because n is the size of the determinant, so it should be this. So you should have uh, something similar implemented outside, and it should be calling it every time, so that you don't have any leftover garbage. And you should call this here also, although you know that in any case, if the your program completes, so your deallocation will automatically be done like that. Is that okay? 
so i'm not writing this so this part you can write okay so for deallocating de uh, the matrix uh, there is no single line common like delete uh, square bracket square bracket and no, how can you do this if you have done the allocation in two steps can you do the deallocation in one step no sir so that we have already, i have already illustrated that how to deallocate it in my uh, theory class i have i've done that yes right? do i need to write it once again okay. do i need to write it here hello no sir okay so this is done now this is also to show that how you write codes piece wise so don't write the whole code say a uh, 200 lines code and start debugging and you know that is filled up with garbage so write a small so uh, whenever it and wherever it is possible try to debug it and run it and then write the next few lines of code okay okay so i think sir i had one uh, question can i ask no hmm Sir, uh, uh, for um, for passing a two D array in the for to another function, uh, why can can it be like that? If we are uh, declaring a two D array in the main uh, main mm -hmm. function and passing it to a uh, passing it to a function, it gives an error. So why do we always need to allocate the memory in heap and then only we can uh, transfer like pass it to the function? I'm not getting. So, if it is a static allocation, then what do I do? Is that your question? Yes, sir. For if we allocate the two D array means in this main like static allocation, if there is a static allocation, then uh, we cannot pass it to the uh, function for uh, processing. Uh, we need to uh, allocate it in heap, and then only we can. Uh, yes, it. actually, they are. I mean, if you so, although I have shown that. Uh, mm, Like if I write here int asterisk asterisk t, and then I, then if I assign the address of the 2D array to it, so I mean the, as per the theory, p should be able to point to a, right? Yes, sir. But this in some compilers, this this does not happen, and uh, so you cannot really do that. So if you know the number of columns, then then you can probably do that. So in a typical static allocation. if you try to assign the base address of that 2d allocation if you try to assign it to a uh, simple pointer variable pointing to uh, which is a pointer to pointer to integer it may not accept it because they are not compatible so it's a because the nature of a is basically a constant and this p is not a constant pointer so there lies the problem so the thing is what you want so this p instead of assigning it to p directly it's basically you are trying to pass the value of the base address or, or the you know whatever a is supposed to store or whatever a displays that value you are passing it to p some pointer variable which is a local argument of that function right yes sir but that if you so in a single line say if you if you write like this you see Right here, a, a. No matter what I do, if I write here int asterisk asterisk say b equals say a. Well, I to explain that it it should work, but it it may not work in many compilers. So here also it's a error message. What it expects cannot convert this, so it expects something like this. so if you say that okay let me let me uh, consider it consider it to be you forcefully type cast if you forcefully type cast it then it works okay and if i if i now okay let me let me initialize it also i have got two rows and three columns so two rows and three columns so 1 so 2 3 4 5 6 so here if i write c out 
b of 0 0 or 0 2 this b 0 2 this is 3 right yes sir Got it? So it is. It is not able to. So although this this is a force allocation, but it is not able to carry on that conversion, and B is not behaving like that. So this is not allowed. I mean, this uh, statically allocated arrays. If you would like to pass, this creates problem. And typically in a C++ compiler, it creates problem. Sometimes in some C compilers, it might work. So in many of the books also, one D array if we stored the pointer, some, do something very similar to like this, then it works. But uh, for two D array, yes, it so it works. But in the thing is, when you when you write P of asterisk asterisk P, so that logic, so P is unable to decode that logical contiguity. So P says that it's a pointer to pointer to integer, but that logical contiguity that uh, th those uh, blue boxes within the uh, within the yellow box so that uh, i mean uh, if you consider that to be the um, uh, way we understand it so here this b or that p is unable to decode that so for 1d array somehow it works but for 2d arrays static arrays it it fails again as i mentioned so there may be some compilers where it works but in most of these compilers in the c++ compilers in these versions they 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 don't work at all as you can see that if I even if I ignore it, if I do this. Now it says that OK, uh, it never cares what you have done. So this allocation is allowed, but then once you try to uh, access the elements. It uh, you, you basically fail to do that. got it so that is how the compiler handles it so we have uh, nothing to do with it hello yes sir any other question so i think we have uh, talked enough about it so i think uh, this I should stop the class because uh, as you mentioned that uh, you all know the heaps quite well. So uh, solving a set of linear equations, I have pasted the, um, the sum of the PDF. So I'll, I'll pass it on to you. You just can use it. So these are some examples given and using grammar rule, I can. So the main task so this I have already done. So the main task will be to uh, try for a uh, solution for a set of linear equations. Okay, just using this. And this heap data structures, just to summarize, that these are tree-based data structure. And the heap properties. So if it's a mean heap, so always the parent is uh, higher than as a minimum than that of the uh, both left and right subtree elements. And this follows all along the tree. And if it's a max heap, it is always higher than the left and rights. And the shape properties is a complete binary tree where all the levels of the tree except the possibly the last one, the deepest one are fully filled up, and the last level of the tree is not complete. And the nodes are from the left to right. So these are all uh, you people know that. And if we can, so it's basically we can consider an array representation by traversing the binary tree in a level order. Level order means this is the first, then one and two, then three, four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine, like this. So if we store it, so if we store it, then if the ith element is there, so the ith element's parent will be found in, the parent of the ith element will be found in. What is the location? I minus one by two, right? And then, so considering this to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's the index. So the, the left child will be found in two into I plus one. And the right child will be found in two into I minus two, right? So if I know this, the rest of the things are. So the element is in. In the 
ith location of the array if it is a sequential if i store it so this i scan then this one then this one then this one like this it's a level order we can say so if we do this i think this insertion deletion i i thought of explaining but i think you people all know that so uh, when i insert i insert basically here and i try to see that whether this is a proper place i i accordingly try to compare it with its parent if the parent is in case of a uh, this is a maxi if the parent is lower than this so the parent it will be swapped with the parent and again after this position it will be comparing with its parent so each time each iteration uh, log n number of log n base to number of iterations it will try to see whether the parent in case of a maxi the, the value of the parent is lower than the new element that we have inserted or that has been exchanged so if it is so i have just swap it that's all and in case of deletion when i deletes any element say 14 is deleted so what i do the last element that is is uh, that is the s minus 1 array array size is s so array s minus 1 that will be copied here directly so it gets overwritten so this becomes deleted so after that we have to descend down to find out whether uh, if this is a max if again if the max if so whether we have got any of its left and right child because i have moved one element from the the last element here so corresponding to this new element so if i if, if i simply remove 14 so one will be copied to 14 now if i see that 8 and 7 so which one is greater than 1 i have to compare 1 with 8 and then uh, then th that element with 7 so if this 8 is so 8 will come here and one will descend down and again i'll check that if one is greater than 2 and 4 i see the largest is 4 so 4 will be here and one will be here so like that i one actually pops down till it finds a Uh, suitable position, or it descends down to the leaf. So that is what deletion means. So these things, I think you can do. So try to implement the heap. Any more questions? Hello. Is that no, okay? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so I'll post the uh, the assignments. The deadline will be uh, next week, Tuesday. end of the day, end of the day so by 12 you have to submit because uh, almost all the assignments i have done done it for you except the heap so in the first few ones i am trying to solve as many assignments for you so that you can uh, so solve it and uh, submit it fast but from the next next week onwards maybe you have to do a bit more of of your own okay any more questions otherwise i'll leave no sir no question okay bye thank you sir thank you sir